Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Off the Books Podcast. As always, I am the lovely Taylor with a Miller Lite in my hand. Again, Miller Lite, if you want to sponsor us, that'd be great. Joining me, as always, the wonderful, the most perfect, he made me, uh, he paid me to say that, uh, Brandon. I've had a reawakening. I'm no longer a B-rank hunter. I am now an S-rank hunter, motherfucker! Okay, well then I'm an S-rank hunter, because... Okay, that's fine. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Anyway, so if you haven't caught on today, we are reading and go... Reading? <laughs> we already read. We already read. Going over the third volume in the solo leveling night late novel series. Yes. I'm very excited. By Chu Gong. Chu Gong. He's so cute. Anyways. Have you seen him? I mean, like, in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Jin Wu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> they all look the same. In my dreams. Uh huh. Why? Because they're Korean? Taylor? No. Because I feel like. They're just sexy Chugong, Korean men. I feel like Chu Gong would be and look like Jin Wu, you know? I feel like that is his spirit animal and that is who he is. Sure. Well, in my mind, he's this awesome, not just an author, but he's an awesome S rank hunter. And we just don't know it yet. As he's stroking his beard, guys. No, it's stubble, actually. It just itched. It's gross. It's because I, I can shaved. Hear it. It's because I shaved yesterday. I had to be. I had to be looking sharp for the wedong. The wedong. Anyways, so let's dive into the synopsis, shall we? Face first, right in the deep end. Perfect. So, leveling up in a C rank dungeons has become next to impossible for Jin Wu, but an E rank hunter attempting anything higher, well, that would raise some serious red flags. So the time has come for a reevaluation, and when the results are back, it's official. Jin Woo is a 10th S rank hunter from South Korea, an entire, entirely new world beaming with powerful magic beasts and elite hunters is now open to him. But before he can immerse himself in it, there's something absolutely vital he has to do. Hmm. I love this one. Yeah, it was a great one. This one, this one was good. For sure. Yeah, this one was good. I was excited for this one. Um, I think I told you what I read this one in a day as well. Maybe two. Two days. Maybe yeah. Maybe two. Yeah, this one. This one I was so excited about, and I kept asking, like Brandon, is this a love interest? Is this the person that I think it is? And because I, I, I had told her I was like the girl that I've been telling you about comes into this series. In the third book. Mm -hmm. And we are going to talk about her today. I'm so excited. Yeah, she's adorable. She is. So. Shall we dive into the actual book? We shall. We shall. So. After leaving the demon's castle and obtaining the recipe for holy water of life, or the elixir of life. Mm-hmm. Jin Woo returns to the Korean Hunters Association to finally get reevaluated for his new hunter's license. The staff within the evaluation department try to dissuade Jin Woo from getting reevaluated, believing that he is just an E rank that couldn't accept his fate as an E rank. Apparently, a lot of E rank people that get E rank try and come back and be like, "Oh no, something was fucked up. I, I ain't an E rank. I'm I'm like a fucking B rank." Mm -hmm. They just can't accept reality. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, because it, 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 the way they said it, it's like once you're in E rank, it's very rare for you to be reevaluated higher. Yeah. And if it is, you're like just a D rank, like you're not getting. Right. Well, and they, they, they try, like, they ask for his identification and he hands them their, his hunter's license and they're like, sir, this is a hunter's license. He's like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> and they're like, what do we do about this? They're like, well, Try and tell him that there's a fee for it and whatnot. They're like, oh, well, there's a kind of a fee for this test. He's like, yeah, I'm good. Just throws the money down. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> if you want to waste the money. <laughs> Have it your way. Right this way, sir. <laughs> so after Jinwoo leaves the front desk, the 
manager of the reception area realizes like recognizes his name Mm -hmm. and immediately calls white tiger guild president yun ho beck to alert him that jin woo had come to get reevaluated because yun ho had asked this man if he ever comes in call me let me know so once once it was jin woo's turn to head into the testing area shit hit the fan the person running the machine made Jin Woo retest multiple times, believing that the machine had broken before his test began. He's like, the, uh, these readings are ridiculous. Like, what's going on with this? Yeah, because it didn't say, um, like, it didn't say a rank. It just said, like, error. Yeah, it was giving, like, an error message. Yeah. So after a more experienced worker came in to see what the problem was with the current test, he realized that there wasn't an issue with the machine, with the machine but that Jin Woo's power was unreadable unreadable meaning he was an s rank hunter whoop whoop yes that's my boy while all of this had been going on the hunters guild the top guild in korea the hunters guild and the hunters association are two different organizations i I do Mm want to clarify that because i thought it was stupid that they named their guild the hunters guild when there's a hunters association yeah it, it confused me i think for the first I think the first full chapter of this or first part, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. it did confuse me until I saw the difference and I like look back and I was like, oh yeah, that is, they, they did have it different. Yeah. Like, that's weird. So their president, uh, Joe Che, was visiting the Hunters Association trying to meet with one of the managers that worked there. Um, what I believe was to get two A-rank permits for two A-rank gate. Mm-hmm. Two A-rank gates. I'm sorry, my nose is a little stuffed up, so like it sounds like I'm slurring my words a little bit. I've only had half a beer, I swear to God. <laughs> swear to God. <laughs> it's 12.43 on a Friday. <laughs> like, Hey, it's wedding day, people. We're getting prepared. Pre-gaming. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, with his high perception, he was able to hear the commotion going on within the testing building and suggested that he and the manager he was meeting with should go and check things out. Uh, with Jin Woo's power being unreadable, the current machine, the association, on the current machine, the association asked him to come back in three days so they could use a more accurate machine to evaluate him. As he was leaving, Jo Wing Che came into the, came in and met Jin Woo for the first time. He stopped and introduced himself, and Jin Woo walked straight past him like he wasn't even there. What Joe a Wing- badass boss. Joeen stopped Jin Woo and readdressed him again just for Jin Woo to leave everyone in confusion by refusing his the offer of a meeting with the president of the most powerful guild in Korea. <laughs> so when we talked in the first uh, book about someone being like, oh, why why are we excited that Jin Woo is here? Is he like the ultimate hunter or something like that? Mm-hmm. And they were like, no, that's Joeen Che. This is that Joeen Che. Yeah. He, he is an S-rank hunter that is known as the ultimate hunter mm-hmm. or the ultimate soldier. And he's not even the most powerful hunter in his guild. Nope. So, Jin Woo met up with Jin Ho for dinner where Jin Ho tried to convince Jin Woo to join the Yujin Construction Company's new guild, the Yujin Guild. Mm -hmm. Jin Ho had been told by his father that if he could convince Jin Woo to join their guild, he would be named as the new guild master. Jin Woo declined and told Jin Ho that he would be starting his own guild and offered Jin Ho the vice president position if he ever wanted it. This shocked Jin Ho and left him with a lot to think about. Jin Woo had just enough time left in his evening to reach the hospital his mother was housed at to visit. Even though she was in a was comatose, he told her that he had found a way to bring her back to him and Gina and just to hold on a little longer. When he went to leave, he found Jin Cho Wu from the surveillance team of the Hunters Association waiting for him. Jin Chol told Jin Woo that there was someone waiting for him. Jin Woo was reluctant to meet with this person until he found out that it was the Hunters Association president, Gun Hee Go, the most powerful hunter in Korea. Gun Hee approached Jin Woo with an offer to join the ranks of the Hunters Association and become his number two. He told Jin Woo how him joining one of the top guilds in Korea could upset the balance that the Hunters Association was barely able to keep a hold of. Jin Woo strongly considered President Go's pres- proposal, 
but realized that he would no longer be able to challenge Strong Gates as a member of the association. He politely declined the offer which President Goh thought was due to the fame and money that Jin Wu could possibly gain by joining a large guild. He was very surprised when Jin Wu stated that he couldn't accept because he wanted to fight magic beasts. This surprised me that he didn't take it. And I think I think it only surprised me because I was thinking he could still hunt mm -hmm. when he was a part of the so association. But see the But he would be more of like desk clerk kind of work, well, right? He he could do something like Jinchol. Because Jinchol is an A rank hunter and one of the like top A rank hunters in the country. Mm -hmm. He's like one of the strong he he is right below an S rank. Yeah. But the only gates that the association get are D and E rank gates. Oh, So he yeah. wouldn't be able to go into those gates and continue leveling up. That makes sense. Okay. Because I was like, oh, by him, by him taking that position doesn't mean he's going to be doing more like just desk work and, you know. Well, and he, he would be. He, yeah. He, he might work with the surveillance team. Oh, probably. Which are essentially like the hunters' police. Mm -hmm. They they're the people that kind of like keep track of certain hunters that have certain powers, and if someone is breaking one of the the laws for hunters, they're the ones that go and get them. Yeah. So. Definitely not what he like is like good for. Teshik Kang from the first book. Yeah. He was part of the surveillance team. Um, and remember he said that one of the reasons he joined the surveillance team as opposed to a guild was because he liked hunting people more than he liked hunting magical beasts yeah so yeah yeah that's fucked up well Tessic was pretty fucked to begin with yeah because he was the one with the um prisoners mm -hmm. yeah okay where Jin Woo got the stealth skill from yeah yes which we are about to see him use here soon mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm excited while Jin Wu was waiting for the three days to pass so he could retake his test, he decided to look for some quick work. Everything he was able to find was for strike squads raiding c rank dungeons. He really wanted to experience a higher rank dungeon, but knew he couldn't without being a member of a guild. In a last-ditch effort to find something, he changed the parameters of his search to include nothing but high-ranked dungeons and got a hit. Uh, before long, he was at the site of an a rank dungeon currently being raided by the Hunters Guild, working as a temp for their ex excavation team. Yeah. I almost said evacuation. Evacuation. <laughs> so... They might need it. The way that... The way that we've seen dungeons go so far is as they're going through, like with, with Jin Wo and Jin Ho. Mm -hmm. uh, Jin Ho. They kill the monsters and collect the essence stones as they go through then they kill the boss mm -hmm. move and on then leave. Yeah. yeah with like the dungeon that they're about to go in there's the strike squad that goes in first and takes out all the monsters except the boss mm -hmm. and then the excavation team and the collection team that work for the guild go in the excavation team is in charge of collecting the essence stones and mining the magic gems that are in the walls of these dungeons and the collection team is in charge of going in and collecting the bodies of the monsters that the strike squad killed and hauling them out yeah so they are they are milking every possible scent that they can out of these dungeons yeah i mean i think that's a smart way to do it if you're gonna do these kinds of guilds and it gave a um a good look to being able to give the strike squad a, a break. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they come out, they take their rest for, you know, however long it takes for the excavation team and collecting and... Which could be anywhere from four to like 10 hours. Exactly. So, I mean, they get a, a nice good break and then they go in uh, and defeat the boss and they're good to go. But they, they also did something smart that I like. They have two strike squads so they well, have normally they have one yeah they normally have one but because they were able to get these gates yeah they split them into two i thought it was a smart idea so not one person is overly exhausted right but you would think 
especially with the Hunter's Guild having two S ranks within it, they would split their S ranks one to each group. You would think. You would think. That'd be the smartest way to go. But they did not. No, they did not. But their S ranks are also different types of hunters. Yeah. Like, Join Che is a mage hunter. Mm hmm. And their other S rank, who I will mention here in a moment, is a brawler. Mm hmm. Or a, a tank. Yeah. Like, they, they are one of the first people, you know, kind of a frontline fighter. Yeah. And at this point, do we know about Jin, Jin Wu's um, special? His class? Yeah. They. So right now he's still an E rank and they they're he's a brawler. Okay. He was an E rank brawler. But in the end of the second book when he has all the well really throughout the second book he has the mage classification within the player rank. Because he's a necromancer. He's a shadow monarch. That is his job title, is Shadow uh, Monarch. But I thought I thought he even said that's like mage type. It so it, it evolved from necromancer, mm -hmm. but it he is classified as a shadow monarch. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Continue, good sir. Yes. So technically he is No, I take that back. I'm not going to clarify that right now. That's fine. Because that will lead into a whole nother can of worms that we have not gotten to yet. I agree. <laughs> I apologize for bringing up anything. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> so while he was waiting to enter the dungeon with the excavation team, Jin Wu saw the Hunter's elite strike squad exiting the dungeon. The man leading the group was Zhou Ying Che, president of the guild. While watching the group exit, he began to think that this group was weak, even though they were the top-ranked strike squad in Korea. This he was like, well, fuck. I guess this is just how fucking strong I've gotten. Like these are, this is the best fucking strike squad in Korea, and one of the best in the world. And I think they're weak. Yeah, he can defeat everybody in that guild. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. that that's weak. He thought they were weak until a certain someone's magical energy uh, caught his attention. A woman was exiting the guild that he thought 99 out of 100 men would call pretty. 99 out of... He did a family feud freaking <laughs> like evaluation. He was like, we surveyed 100 men and 99 of them said she is pretty. <laughs> one, one of them said she was hot. Uh, um... And he realized that this must be Korea's ninth S-ranked hunter, the Hunters Guild Vice President, Hei In Cha. A little cha-cha. <laughs> Love a little cha-cha. Um, which, she actually picked up on him. Yeah. And started, like, kind of scanning the area. Mm -hmm. And he, like, hid his presence. And she was like, oh, I thought, you know, President Che had come back or something like that. He's yeah. like, I don't know where I was feeling that from. Anyway. Through the first half of his day, he watched one of the veterans on the team and copied how he worked. This made Jin Wu one of the best workers on the team, accomplishing the work of four to five men all on his own. Uh, once everyone broke for lunch, Jin Wu opted to stay in the dungeon and continue working. Once everyone had left, he dashed farther into the dungeon to check out the boss. He just wanted to get, get a little peeky peek. Mm -hmm. Seeing this behemoth of a monster, Jinwu had to fight the urge to attack it himself. Mm -hmm. He was standing there when he heard someone behind him call out to him. It was Heian. Uh, he tried to play it off that he was just lost and started heading back to his work area until she stopped him. And decided to sniff him. Yeah. She just starts sniffing him. I mean, that's, I think, where all good love stories start. With a sniff. With a, with a little sniff. You know, most say it starts with a hand on the shoulder, but not me. I say it starts with a good long sniff. <laughs> like a German shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> what breed are you? <laughs> uh, probably... Uh, uh, if I had to guess what, what one I am, I'd say a golden retriever. 
You do give off golden retriever energy. Right. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> I was going to give myself Rottweiler because I can look like a bitch, but I'm very sweet. Sometimes I think your sister gives off chocolate lab energy. Dumb as box of rocks, but very smart and easily trainable. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying she's smart, just common sense kind of out the door. Yeah. That door was shut, locked, and latched years ago. <laughs> as soon as she became a nurse, just all the doors of the common sense just there in are the many, back of the room. There are many times where I have to, I look at her and I'm just like, just remember she's got a master's degree. She's got a fucking master's degree. People let her operate on their hearts. And she does a great job. Like, she, she wouldn't does. be able to be in a room. I'm just trying to make sure she doesn't yell at me when she hears this. <laughs> no, these are conversations <laughs> that she and I have had before, so... Yeah, true. <laughs> so, she, uh, Hayen asked if he was truly a hunter due to his scent. Uh, that was when she saw his his tags, found out his name was Jin Woo Song, and then he was an E-rank hunter. She's like, huh, okay. Yeah, because she said... There's something about you. Yeah. And I, and it was this part, too, that she even brings up um, in her own thoughts. She was like, normally, lower rank hunters smell bad to me. So the fact that he's E-rank and smells one of like the most delicious people I've ever smelt, she's well, a little caught off guard. Yeah. It's like, a- after, he fa- after this, he found out from his foreman... That Hayen had a condition that gave her an extremely strong sense of smell, and hunters apparently smelled horrible due to the, the mana they exuded. The stronger the hunter, the worse they smelled. Regular yeah. people smelled fine; they just they just smelled like people. Yeah. But she was smelling the ec- the mana that was like coming off of the people. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, she was normally like wonder. she was like normally like covering her nose with a handkerchief or something like that. Handkerchief. You said chief. A handkerchief? You said handkerchief. Yeah, I thought I said a handkerchief, but whatever. <laughs> it was just funny. Anyways, uh, the foreman tried to convince Jin Woo to join the team full time, but he declined. But the foreman was able to convince Jin Woo to return the following day to another dungeon the other half of the Elite Strike Squad would be handling. That night, Hayen was wasn't able to sleep or get Jin Woo out of her head. So she called their recruitment team's manager and asked them to pull all of the information they could on Jin Woo, only to find out that President Che had done the same thing the day before. Because everybody wants to know about him. Yeah. I mean, I guess, he's I guess I, the best. I guess I did forget to like mention earlier when, after Jin Woo had left, and, um, and President Che was like, did I like not introduce myself correctly here or something like that and the dude was like no 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 you you definitely like introduced yourself Mm -hmm. che catches yoon ho beck running in like running full sprint into the fucking like testing area and che was like that's the son of a bitch that helped the fucking white tigers Mm -hmm. that's why yoon ho is here like this yeah yeah so che was able to finally able to figure out who helped the White Tigers with the Red Gate? Yeah. Yeah. And it is, um, to me, it is crazy that it was able to be such a secret of him helping the Red Gate, even though, like, you know, the all the guys that tried to keep it quiet is was because they wanted him personally after he was reevaluated. So they tried to keep it under wraps. But there's so many people from different squads that have been slowly finding out about him Mm -hmm. that I'm surprised it didn't blow up quicker than it did. Right. Well, it was because everyone wanted a a shot at him, so they were like, we need to keep this on the DL. Yeah. The only... But everybody knew. (laughs) The only one that really broke that was the one of the c rank hunters from the white tiger guild that mm. was part of the red gate because he took that information to Ju- uh, jin ho's father yeah and that's how he found out about jin woo mm-hmm. and found out that you know jin ho and jin woo had been doing these these gates together and that jin ho had been getting getting help from him yeah and that's why he was like i will make you guild master if you are able to get him to join our guild yeah and yeah. At that point, though, 
or really because Jin Jin Ho when he talked to Jin Wu and he was like no I really don't want to join your guild I'm sorry but he's like I'm gonna start my own guild yeah you can join mine yeah and Jin can I talk about that right now or yeah. okay I didn't know if it went in line with chain of events but um Jin <laughs> Jin Ho comes back to Jin Wu after he after he tells his father he was like I I wasn't able to get him yeah and he's like he was like do you know why I'm starting this guild and he was like to make money right and he mm-hmm. was like why would I piss off some of the strongest people in Korea just to make money when we were the most profitable company in this country and one of the 20 most profitable companies in the world yeah he was like I'm doing this to protect our family mm-hmm. and Jin Ho was like did he say our family is he is he including me in this? Yeah. And he's like, but I see, it seems like you found a person like that for you already. Mm-hmm. He was like, so you pass. I'm going to make you guild master. And he was like, I appreciate the offer, but I'm but going to turn it down. I'm going to join the boss's guild. <laughs> yeah. And, and Jin Woo's home with his sister at the time. And... This was right after the reevaluation. Mm-hmm. So everybody knows he's S rank. And um, there's like cameras flashing outside and all this. Mm. And yeah, we need to get to oh, that. Yeah. 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 That, that's, that is after this. Yeah. Okay. I'll let you talk about that. But then I want to get back to Jin Ho. Yeah. Jin Ho. <laughs> I think Jin Ho might be your favorite character. I fucking love Jin Ho. <laughs> and I even told Brandon earlier, I was like, I'm so upset that he wasn't as um, involved in this book. Yeah, yeah. Because he he just brings that level level of comedy that when it's a serious situation, he kind of dies it down, and you you can relax before the next like epic battle. Mm-hmm. Well, it's funny because there there is there's a scene in the next book where they 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 are starting their guild. They're not a, officially started yet, mm-hmm. but Jin Ho has accepted the vice president role, which he had told his father that he was going to. Yeah. And Jin Woo shows up at the office that they're going to rent, and Jin Woo's there just like fucking typing away on the computer just like oh you think you're gonna talk shit about my boss on the on the fucking internet and shit like that and Jin Woo's like hey what are you doing and Jin Woo's like oh shit and like tries to hide the computer and he's like huh I had heard that there was someone online threatening to sue people for slandering my name didn't think that it was Jin Ho <laughs> I fucking love Jin Ho like he just has the perfect like puppy dog character and I just I want to protect him forever. It's it's so funny to think that he's gotten to that point when in when he first shows up and he's like, "Hey man, you just stick stay behind me and I'll protect you." Exactly. <laughs> and then Jin Woo just Jin annihilates like, everything. Hey, I don't I appreciate that, but I don't really meet like need it. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like seeing what happens and he's like, "Oh my goodness, that is my boss. <laughs> that is my boss's boss." That is the boss's boss's boss. That's my boo. Okay. <laughs> I just oh my love, god! I love their dynamic as characters. Yeah, yeah, they they are great together. Yeah. So Jin Woo returned the following day to everyone's delight when the excavation. Should have put a comma there. When the excavation <laughs> team was approached by the leader of that day's strike squad, Ki Hoon Song. Um, he was looking for a luggage carrier, which to everyone's dismay, Jin Woo volunteered for. Mm-hmm. Which all of them were like, no, d- d- don't do that. What are you doing? It's not worth the money. Yeah. And then the, the foreman's even like, like Ki Hoon, no, no, don't. He's an E-rank. Don't take him. He just started. He's a temp. Yeah. And Ki Hoon's like, there's something in about his gaze. I don't think he, he's so, he's not telling us everything. So yeah. I, I'm I'm going to take him. And he even was it him though that even got scared about Jin Woo. Possibly. I think it was because he like looked at Jin Woo and I think it, he gave him the murderous intent. Glate. Oh uh, no, that was um. That was somebody else. That was another member of the excavation team when they gotcha. first walk, yeah, yeah, walked yeah. into the, the dungeon the day before. Yes. Okay. Jin okay. Woo was standing there and he had like 
his guard was up because mm-hmm. like he could feel a breeze coming through there and realized it was actually being exuded from the mana the boss mm-hmm. was letting loose. And one of the dude tried to like shoulder him because, you know, he's an E-rank and the newbie. And the dude, he, Jinwoo didn't even fucking budge. Yeah. And the dude was like, what the, the fuck? fuck? And Jinwoo looked back at him and he had this maniacal fucking smile on his face. This is why I love Jin Woo. <laughs> He's such a baller, man. So once inside the dungeon, the group was attacked by a group of dungeon jackals, which Jin Woo thought was strange due to the fact that these monsters normally were only found within c rank dungeons. After a little inspection, uh, the group was able to determine that these creatures were being raised by a higher power within the dungeon. They were able to find, like, marks around, like, their necks where, like, collars or ropes were, like, had them tied up somewhere. So after progressing a little farther in, they ran into a group of high orc warriors. These are some of the strongest monsters that you could run into inside an A-rank dungeon. The group was getting pushed back by the orcs until Jinwoo activated his stealth skill and started cutting the, the orcs' hamstrings and Achilles tendons helping the group defeat the orcs without a casualty. I just loved how the one healer thought she was going insane because she was about to get murked by one of the orcs. And then all of a sudden that some bitch just started floating up in the air and then his whole head and spine was pulled out yeah. and it flew across the room and hit another one and broke that dude's neck. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, wow, I am strong. <laughs> I didn't even touch And him. she's <laughs> trying to tell ki afterwards, and she's like, hey, I saw something really fucking strange. Yeah, and he's like, and he's, I don't believe you fucking And she's crazy. like, no, I'm, I'm being serious. Like, I, I saw this. It yeah. happened right in front of me. So, yeah. Um, so, after some discussion, ki decided to have the group retreat and get the full strike squad but when they tried to exit the dungeon, a magical barrier was covering the exit. A larger group of orcs found them at the entrance and forced the group to follow them to their boss's lair. Once in the boss's lair, they found a high orc mage that spoke to them and told them that he would be u- they would be using the humans for entertainment until the dungeon broke and they could be released. Ki Hoon had communicated to the with the group on the way that w- they would attack once they saw the boss. The boss released some of his mana, and Ki Hoon jumped, making his move to attack. When he turned back, none of the other members of the strike squad had attacked with him. <laughs> they were all stuck in sp- in place, scared stiff. And the- you would think these are high level rank hunters. These are all A and B rank hunters. Yeah, you there's not think- a C rank among them. You would think they would not, you know, mm-hmm. hover or hesitate to, to get this monster. Oh, there wasn't even a hesitation. It was a, I'm going to piss my pants and stay right in this spot. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so the boss used his magic to start slamming ki into the floor and ceiling. You know, when I read that scene, I thought about the scene... In Avengers with with, with the Hulk, Hulk and, Loki. and Loki just doom, doom, doom. And I was like, oh, that's funny, but it's not funny. Yeah. Um, Jinwoo waited until ki dropped his sword, stating that ki was some... He would realize ki was someone that did not give up. Yeah. And he knew as long as he had a sword in his hand, he was still willing to try and fight. Mm-hmm. Um, so he waited until ki dropped his sword after being slammed dozens of times into the floor and ceiling. Once he dropped the sword, Jinwoo jumped into the fray and rescued ki Once at a safe distance, Jinwoo asked ki if he could defeat all the monsters on his own. ki asked him to save them and Jinwoo decided to save the boss for last and to make him feel the fear that he had um, inflicted on the rest of the people. Yeah, and the reason Jin Wu had asked him if he would let him kill all these monsters is because it was owned by the Hunter's Guild, so it 
became more legally like is he, he, he allowed didn't, to he didn't want to steal from them exactly he didn't want to steal from them yeah yeah which is sweet i but it's, at that it's, point it just shows the morality that he holds yeah yeah he's a, he's a smart guy and it's more is this right rather than just go for it yeah but he also like there have been times in previous books where he just goes for it because he knows he can. Mm-hmm. So um, after Jin Wu had gone into the dungeon, Heian had showed up at the dungeon site hoping to run into Jin Wu again. She found the excavation team and heard that Jin Wu had gone into the dungeon with the strike squad. After feeling a strong burst of mana come from from the dungeon, Heian decided to follow them inside, but realized she didn't have her swords. And had to settle with a pickaxe. It's just so funny, too. That will be a running joke between these two. Yeah. Because everybody started kind of laughing at her, too. But then was, like, afraid to laugh at her near her. Because they're like, oh, my God, she'll kill me if I laugh. Right. Uh, the Hunters Association had also found out that Jin Wu had accepted a job with the Hunters Guild as a minor. This intrigued G- uh, Jin Cho who also showed up at the site and realized that the original reading for the dungeon was once again wrong. He and three of the surveillance team members that were with him dashed into the dungeon while leaving one member behind to alert the association. Um, Jin Wu summoned his soldiers and led them into battle, being outnumbered about 200 to 50. Yeah. So that's what, four to one? Yeah, about, yeah. Four, about four to one. Um, he treated the boss's elite guards the same way the boss had treated Kihun, <laughs> using ruler's hand, which is one of his skills, to slam them into the floor and ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> to the point that one of them was st- stuck in the ceiling. <laughs> I just, again, I will always and forever say Jin Wu is a badass bitch and I love him forever. I especially love the way he dresses going to a parent-teacher conference, but that's besides the point. Okay. That is the only way you will ever see him again, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, he <laughs> it's going to be my the background to my phone in a minute. Like, I, I don't know why I didn't think about that sooner. Oh, God. So, as Jin Moon and his soldiers were striking down the high orcs, he was summoning their shadows and turning them against their former companions. This scared the living shit out of the orcs, seeing their friends not be able to die in glorious battle and proceed on to their version of Valhalla, essentially. Uh, the boss realized that they were going to lose this fight, but that Jin Wu was the key to all of these troops in black. He tried to cast multiple curses on Jin Wu, but none worked due to Jin Wu's immunity. The boss, feeling backed into a corner, finally used his drum- trump card casting the Song of Giants, growing to over 10 meters tall, which is over 30 feet. Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. Uh, he looked for Jin Wu to crush him like a bug, only to find him above him and coming in for the kill. After defeating the boss, Jin Wu took his shadow, which was a level 1 elite knight, becoming the strong- his strongest shadow. He named the shadow Fang. It wasn't until after defeating the boss that he realized that Heian and Ki Chol were both there and had watched the entire fight. Ki Chol and the other members of the surveillance team moved in to help get Jin Wu out of the dungeon without a lot of questions from the strike squad. Because everyone from the strike squad was kind of like surrounding him at this point, trying to be like, thank you and all this kind of stuff. And Heian's just like, he, Jin Wu leaves with Ki Chol and the other surveillance members. And Heian's just standing there like with her hand out. And they're like, like vi- Vice President, are you, are you okay? She's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. They're like, why do you have a pickaxe? <laughs> <laughs> why do you have a pickaxe? <laughs> also, I'm not looking up photos from him at the parent-teacher conference. If you go onto, a, onto the fandom page for Jin Wu and look at gallery, it's in there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I knew exactly what you're fucking looking for. 
was just so excited. <laughs> he's just so cute. You'll be able to find many pictures of Jin Woo in there. Oh, he's just so cute. Okay, I will ask you this question. Who do you love more? Uh, Jin Woo or um, what's his face from the night court? Oh. <gasps> You can't do that to me. Oh, I'm doing that to you. You're talking about Daddy Ree's hand? Mm-hmm. Daddy Ree's hand or Daddy Jin Woo? <laughs> oh, that hurts. That hurts. Okay, technically... Oh, no. <laughs> They're both so different. Like, you can't... You can't put... Oh, my goodness. B, don't do this to me. I'm doing this to you. Who would you go for? Um, option C, which is neither. <laughs> because That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. If you had to go gay, which one would you go for? Jin Woo. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> the transition. I mean, Resan was always hot. Mm-hmm. There's no... It, there's no explaining that. He was just, he's always hot. Jin Woo. It's in his name. Woo. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna write, you're gonna write a song about his, uh, his exploits. <sighs> Maybe. <laughs> Call it the Woo song. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would. He, he's my favorite. He's my love. I can't, I can't believe I actually got you to say that. <laughs> I mean, there's just nobody else that does it better than Jin Woo. Oh, my God. All right, so Jin Woo showed back up at the Hunters Association to get his retest, only to find a large group of reporters in front of the entrance. A movie star was getting his Hunters ranking and was trying to hold a press conference when Jin Woo started making his way through the crowd of reporters towards the front door. Once he hit the step, the steps, the star's manager confronted Jin Woo and tried to make him go around, saying that the front door was closed for the press conference. Excuse that me. That was lovely. Yeah, excuse me. Um, this is when President Go showed up and forced the star to let Jin Woo through and personally escorted Jin Woo into the building. Gun he basically said, um, "Who who gave you?" authorization to hold this press conference here and the star was like that would be you <laughs> and he's like Me exactly Ooh. and all the reporters like who was that guy that president gun he go just escorted personally into the building mm-hmm. so uh once Jin Woo arrived in the testing center he saw that yun ho beck and joni Ch- joan che were already waiting to speak to him after the test, and President Go had already had told him, "Yeah, these two have been waiting here for about an hour for you to get here." <laughs> um, I, I just find it f- so funny that the, um, actor, what's his name? Goddamn, Min Sung. Min Sung. Min Sung Lee. Yeah, that. He's there. He's thinking all the... I mean, at first, the reporters were there for him. And he's like, this is my day. This is my moment. And then Jin Woo walks in and they're like, Jin Woo, Jin Woo. And he's like, no, look at me. He's like, but what about me? (laughs) He's just like a a little child. He's like, what about Min (laughs) Sung? What about my moment? (laughs) Oh, Lord. I found it. It took me a damn hot minute, but I found the photo. <laughs> you are ridiculous. Thank you. <laughs> so, Jinwoo showed the test proctor how he could summon his shadow soldiers and said he could summon about a hundred of them. Uh, he was ranked as an S rank mage hunter and finally got his new hunter's license. Once he finished his test, he refused the meetings with Beck and Cho and exited the front door only to be confronted by a sea of reporters. Once Jin Woo's test had become final, the Hunters Association posted his results and it was quickly picked up by every major news outlet in Korea. 
Jinwoo literally pulled a fucking Superman and jumps over this fucking crowd. I love that scene. He just like, fly high. <laughs> just doop. He just jumps over them and then flags down a taxi to take him to the Hunter's Auction House. I just, I love this man. I'm telling you right now. Look how good he looks at my background. <laughs> <laughs> His face is a little hidden by the, by the time, but we'll figure it out. Okay. Once at the auction house, he tried to sell the Sphere of Avarice that he had picked up in the Demon's Castle, which they rated as priceless. So the Sphere of Avarice is something that we have not talked about. It's literally a blood red sphere that when held um, increases a person's magical output by 100%. Yeah. And he acquired this in the... In the Demon's um, Castle. Demon, yeah, Demon's yes. Castle. So what literally, like when he tells them, they're like, oh, well, what can it do? And he's like, it in- increases a person's magic. And they're like, oh, by how much? Like 10, 15 percent. And he goes, 100 percent. And they're like, what the fuck? They're like, um, excuse me? Do you want to run that by me again? He <laughs> said, uh, yeah, 100 one, percent. One, because I'm a boss ass bitch. They were like, even if you had the world's best magic craftsman. They couldn't make this. Where did you find this? And he was like, I didn't want to really tell him like the actual truth. So I told mm-hmm. him like a half truth. He was like, I found it in a dungeon. Yep. Yeah. I mean, he technically did. Yeah. To an extent. It's just nobody else but him can in, uh, can ever enter. Right. So he decided to keep the sphere. And this was, I thought this was funny because he was like, well, I guess I'll, I'll keep the sphere. And he was like, I'm pretty sure I heard cheering come from my shadow. Mm-hmm. And it was all of his mages. It was so cute. <laughs> so cute. So he decided to keep the, sp- the sphere, much to the delight of all of his mages, and instead sell some items from the store. This gave him the money he needed to purchase the fire-resistant items to help fin- him finish the final 25 floors of the demon castle. With these items, he finally returned to the castle where he was given the quest collecting demon souls too so in the first collecting demon souls quest he had to collect ten thousand demon souls mm-hmm. with this he was tasked with collecting one soul the soul of the demon monarch balan there is a very key word in his title a very key word what was it his his title is the demon monarch balan and he and would monarch because Jin Wu is a monarch, shadow monarch. So they're both the same to an extent, the same rank. You could also say that they're both monarchs. That's what I meant. Leading you to believe that maybe there's other monarchs. Oh. Are we thinking the same thing? I mean, I know. <laughs> then we're not. <laughs> like, I know exactly what, what, where this goes. What the fuck is that? It's Jin Woo. What happened to his face? Because uh, it was like a little thingy thing that you can like put in. I don't know what it is. It, it just makes, it's an AI composition. Okay. Look how cute he looks. Oh, your back bits. <laughs> the little kitty cat. Come here. Yes, I hear you. <laughs> you can hear it so <laughs> clear. <laughs> That's Bitsy. Bitsy girl. I'm the craziest of the cats. Where are you? There, there she you is. Are. Come here. <laughs> yeah, Bitsy. Uh, thank you for adding your. <laughs> Your opinion on Jin Woo. He is hot. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Bitsy. Maybe one of these days we'll get Haggy to meow into the microphone too. She, she doesn't meow on command. <laughs> She's not as cool. <laughs> but she is the... Official, unofficial mascot of the God, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. So as he was going through, he... Decided that normally when he was first going through, he was just going through. He was killing every demon to get as much experience as he could. Yeah. Now he had a goal to get through because he needed the purified blood of the demon monarch to 
finish out the recipe for the life elixir. Yeah. So he was like, I just want to get through this as fast as I can, get that shit, and get home and get my mom back. Yeah. So he decided to... He had summoned all of his troops and decided to split them into six groups and spread them out across the floor to help find the teleportation certificates faster. Uh, With this method, he quickly made it to the 80th floor where his troops started facing more difficult monsters. Mm -hmm. He realized that groups that were being, the groups that were being attacked the most were the groups without a named shadow leading them. Yeah, the weaker... Yes. The weaker of the groups. Yes, because he had Egress leading one group, um, Fang was leading one, Tank. Iron was leading one, but Tank's not named. Oh, yeah. Tank, he he just Tank, called him that. But Tank was leading a group, and then there was two other groups. Mm-hmm. So he was able to figure out that Tank's group would be the next group attacked and moved to their area. He used his stealth skill to hide his presence and used his high perception to find the five arc arch demons hiding under the ground and the four mysterious demons approaching the group on horseback. Jinwoo watched the the demon noble and three demon knights quickly dispatch Tank and his bears before jumping into action and quickly dispatching the three knights before turning on the noble. He pinned the noble to the ground and ripped off their helmet. Jinwoo realized she was a humanoid demon female and that she could talk. Bitsy, what? <laughs> what? What's up? You know who else can talk? Bitsy. <laughs> <laughs> what is up? No one's in there. No one's in there, darling. No one's in there. She's just a crazy kitty. She is. She is. That's why I had to pause this earlier when we were recording because she was playing with the fucking blinds. She always does. Okay. Jump on the couch. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um... Where the fuck was I? Uh, she quickly surrendered as Jinwoo started to question her. He tried to ask her about the demon's history and where they had came from. She began to answer, but the system blocked Jinwoo from hearing what she said before she passed out. When she awoke, she saw piles, and I mean piles, of fucking arch demons and other lesser ranked demons around her. The carcasses. Yes. And realized that Jinwoo had protected her while, while she slept. Uh, she told him that her name was Isil and that her family was the demon clan in charge of protecting this floor. She asked him to spare her and her family. And he told her that he would in exchange for the transportation permit and her guide for her to guide him to the other clans protecting the other permits. She took him to meet her father who was quickly enraged because he could see the army within Jen Wu's shadow. He told them that he had promised Diesel that he would not attack them and that he was the person that had fought through the 79 floors of the castle. Diesel's father realized that just by allowing Diesel to, gu- to guide Jen Wu and by giving him the teleportation permit, which is the third different way that I've called that in the last like 10 minutes, Mm-hmm. Um, they could move this crazy ass human on without taking any losses. So Isil led Jin Wu to the clan on the 81st floor and stopped him before they got to the castle. Um, she got into her bag and tried to give him some items to bargain with, just like they, he had done with her clan. He had told her that he wasn't going to do that. <laughs> And then sent his troops to attack the demon clan's castle. Isil witnessed witnessed the destruction of every demon clan above her families through the 95th floor. Yeah. Where Jinwoo decided to send her back to her clan. And before he did that, she was like, he was like, no, you're not coming with me. And he was, she was like, oh my God, am I going to die here? Yeah, she's like, I'm useless now. I'm and gonna she, die. She like closed her eyes, and then woke up, like opened them, and he was like six inches from her face, and then like put his hand on her head and like patted her head and was like, "You did really well. Like you can go back to your to your clan." Daddy Jin Woo <laughs> just he knows how to respect the women that help him. 
Well, I think Iso kind of had a little bit of a thing for him as well. No, she totally <laughs> did. She was just like, I will follow you anywhere. So in in the um, the manga for this, she actually follows him through the 99th floor. And right before yeah. he's about to fight Balan, he sends her back. Okay. But in this, she, he goes through the last four floors by himself. Yeah. Before he gets to him. So... Uh, Jin Woo fought his way through the final four floors without a guide and finally made it to the 100th floor where he faced off with the demon monarch Balan. Um, Bal- when he got there, he realized that it was like it, there was no fire like mm-hmm. there had been. Um, it was snowing, but it wasn't snow. He realizes it was ash. It was ash? Yeah. Yeah. And then he gets the notification the de- demon monarch Balan has realized that that you are here Mm -hmm. and he sees a black dot start moving in the sky and realizes that this dude is essentially riding a fucking dragon it's a wyvern but it's a fucking dragon and all he can think of was i want that i want that yeah that was that was literally all he could fucking think of yeah so jinmu sees that this dragon has a name it's caselin caselin the wyvern kind of sounds like a children's book character almost it really does <laughs> and he's like i fucking want that i want that shit so balan summons the army of hell is what they call it what are you fucking looking at i just realized how close together the lights on the ceiling are okay I, so I, I i just sidetrack real quick i'm talking about this and i look over and taylor's just like following something <laughs> around the goddamn room <laughs> I thought it was a bug or something like that. Is that the ADHD fucking kicking in or some shit Probably, like that? I don't know. Do we need to get you on some Ritalin? Probably. Adderall, Vibance. What What the hell you want here? Just tell me what you need. It's not the simple. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyways. As I was saying... <laughs> Balan summons the army of hell. That makes sense. To fight Jin Wu, which Jin Wu summons his troops to fight them off while he fought Balan one on one. Um, once again, his troops are outnumbered about, I don't know, fucking 10 to 1, basically. Yeah. Because he's got 130 troops. Yeah. And he's fighting off an army of over 1,000. Yes. Yes, so, that makes sense. Yeah. So uh, they start basically, you know, fucking picking him off and whatnot. He he summons Fang. Fang casts his Song of Giants, grows to about fucking 25 meters now. So he's even fucking bigger than he was. Yeah. Because Jin Wu keeps giving him the Sphere of av- Avarice. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's like, yeah, you just, you do your thing. You go melt some faces. Go so, forth and melt. Jin Wu fights Balan one on one. Balan starts shooting lightning out of his fucking mouth at Jin Wu. Because, you know, that's. that's what that I makes ex- sense. That's what I would expect. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, lightning breath. <laughs> so. <laughs> Jin Wu starts attacking him and whatnot. And before he had gone in, he had done the same thing that he did. Um, with the job change quest when he was coming mm-hmm. back from the penalty zone, he took bandages and wrapped his fucking daggers around his, like, in his hands. Yeah. So as he's fighting him, he knocks Balan down, like, onto his back. And Balan's about to shoot lightning into Jin Wu's face. And Jin Wu's like, nope. Not today. I'm just going to go ahead and plug that. So he uses his fist. His motherfucking fist. To just plug the mouth hole. He's like, yeah, just take this in your suck hole. Suck on that for a little bit. <laughs> you stay there while I figure out what to do with you. <laughs> and then takes his right hand because, you know, daggers aren't working. So what's that mean? Plan B time. So he uses once again his motherfucking fists to just beat his fucking face in. And I'm I'm not even going to lie. I've already been listening to number four planning for our episode in two weeks. And I've already found another way to work the sentence used his motherfucking fists into that one as well. 
because Jin Woo just uses his motherfucking fists. When a time lot. gets tough, use your motherfucking fists. Oh my god, we should make a t-shirt that says that. We should. And then just like whoever says it, it will be Jin Woo. <laughs> I think there'll be a little bit of copyright problems, but we'll figure it out. We're just going to sell shirts that say, when times get tough, use your, your motherfucking go to plan B. And on the back of the shirt, it says plan B. Use your motherfucking fist. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. So um, essentially, Jin Woo just, you know, uh, crushes his face through the back of his head. That makes sense. And just kind of splats him out. So he gets the uh, the purified demon blood from this, mm-hmm. and he starts to. He uses that the world tree fragment that he had gotten, as well as the uh, purified water from the from Echo Forest, to create the elixir of life. And depending mm-hmm. on his skill and ability, will tell how many he's able to get. Yeah. So he gets six of them, but then he realizes he still has the world tree. F- fragment in his inventory as well as the purified demon blood mm-hmm. he's like oh can i fucking make more nope sorry buddy the spring water from echo forest is gone yeah i'd used all of that but it only used a little bit of the other two yeah so if you ever get more uh you know echo forest water you got this shit exactly so he um he gets this and then he goes and is able to capture the shadow of caselin oh yeah yes yeah so he gets Kaisel in shadow and names him Kaisel and as he's about to leave that's when the book ends yep yeah because he, he got a new skill called shadow exchange yeah. yeah and during all of this Jin Ho had dropped him off and is waiting for him out in the parking lot <laughs> no, Jin, Jin, Wo, Jin Ho had left he did leave he did leave okay. because this was hours yeah hours that's what I was about to say because he said, stay here, I'll be back. Yeah. Yeah, he he just popped out of a van and disappeared on Jin Ho. Yeah. Again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's very upsetting. But he was going, like, I love the looks on Jin Ho's face when I do this shit. Yeah. But going back real quick, because I did want to bring it up just because it was such a... Um, funny a, scene to you? Not funny. It was just a part of the book that actually made me feel bad for Jin Ho. <laughs> <laughs> was when everybody found found out that Jin Wu is an S rank hunter. His sister knows sh- everybody at school the is pa- the going paparazzi crazy. are at outside of his apartment building taking yeah. pictures, and so he, he notices um, energy coming up from he, the. He, he noticed someone get off the elevator on their floor. Yeah, and notices like their energy coming closer to his door. Yeah, he's like, they're making a beeline for this door. He's like, is it? It's not someone that I. I don't, I'm not expecting anyone. Yeah. It was like, is this someone trying to recruit me or is this just a really fucked up paparazzi? Ballsy, yeah. So he tells his sister to go to, to a room and just stay there for a minute. He opens up the door. It's, it's Jin Ho. And he goes, hey, hey boss, can I, can I stay here for a minute? He's like, I, boss, I got kicked no. out. Can I stay with you? And he's like, nope. Slams the, the door. door in his face. And I was like, poor Jin Ho. And Gina's like, who was that? And he goes, don't know. Never seen him before. Yeah. And I'm like, this is your brother. You called him your brother. But he meets up with him and he puts him up in a hotel. hotel. But you could have just said that to him in the beginning instead of pretending you didn't know him to his sister. Like there are so many other ways he could have been a win about that. Like, But it's classic Jin Woo. It really is. But this is the only time in the, in the book so far where his baldness balding ball ballsiness boldness boldness i guess is a better word of jin Wu made me a little bit angry at him yeah but that's it yeah but that is solo leveling volume three volume four will be coming at you in two weeks <laughs> two weeks and volume five will be coming two weeks after that <laughs> stay tuned <laughs> um so this was a five out of five read for me. I feel like like when I was announcing that, I felt like SpongeBob at the entrance to the <gasps> Bubble Bowl. Uh, uh, uh. He's so excited. <laughs> no, Patrick Mayonnaise is not an instrument. I made your sister watch that episode the other I night. I fucking love that episode. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I love it. Horse radish is not, not an instrument, instrument either, either, Patrick. <laughs> Just 
puts the hand down. <laughs> is this when we do the kicking? Kicking? I want to <laughs> do kicking. <laughs> <laughs> Why you? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. The purple with the white, white car. You left your lights on. <laughs> if you I don't know the really episode you need to watch it guys it's called band geeks it's the 15th episode of season two yeah please watch it it's also it it's it's in the episode with the secret box I fucking love the secret box it's the second half of that episode yeah Secret Box is first, and then Band Geeks is second. And Band Geeks is by far the best 15 minutes of SpongeBob that has ever been put out. I agree with that. Yes. Down, 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 down. The winner takes it home. It's the thrill of one more kill. The, the last, last one to fall. fall. <laughs> I am very sorry about that. <laughs> I'm so excited. We're going to watch it later. <laughs> Anyways. I won't be here later, but still. True. So, that is all for Solo Leveling Volume 3. Mr. Learn. Mr. Brandon. Would you like to give our announcement about next week's episode? I'm so glad you asked. I've been thinking about this for a hot damn minute. So, next week, we'll be, re- uh, we'll be reviewing The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. Um, great writer. This book, I'm about... 70% done with it. It's fantastic. So you really do need to read this. Yeah, I haven't even started it yet. Yeah, you do. This one's good. I promise you. It's it's very good. It's like a mystery. It's a thriller. It It's definitely worth the, the read. But we have a little special surprise for next week. We have joining us again, the most lovely Deanna coming back on. Our number to, one fan. Our number one fan yeah. to review this book with us this was her pick um for us to review so we're kind of we're kind of review this this will be great she'll be on and she'll even join us probably for a a bullshit episode of ours yeah and if those of you who are not familiar with deanna go back and listen to our episode on layla uh that was also deanna's pick that was the first time she was on the show and we are hoping that this will become more of a frequent thing that we can get her on the show with us as well because we always have fun when she's here oh it's always a great time so Shout outs for De- this week. Deanna is my shout out this week because I'm just so excited to have her on next week. All right. Well, my shout out this week will be the exact same as last week because today is their wedding day. Allie and Colin. Yes. The future Mr. and Mrs. Schilt. Um, we are heading to their wedding actually in a little bit. So by the mm-hmm. time that this episode comes out, they will be happily married for not even 24 hours yet. Yep. <laughs> About you know uh 17 mm-hmm. but uh yeah so uh, my my shout out goes to colin and ally can't wait for the wedding tonight i think it's gonna be a lot of fun yeah i think i'm gonna get hammered no you're not yeah <laughs> right just a little <laughs> don't make a fool of yourself or your mom will punch you and i will punch you with her I can't really say what I want to say on the air, but I'll tell you afterwards. Okay. Okay. So, uh, once again, thank you guys for listening. You can find us at Off the Books Podcast on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook at Off the Books Podcast. Follow our TikTok page, uh, also Off the Books Podcast. Um, You can find Taylor on Instagram at TaylorCoff99. You can find me at Mr. Humerick. I don't post that that, that much, but, you know. Uh, I'm trying to get better, but I am not succeeding. He's not a good poster. I am not. So, um, hopefully you guys will come back next week because we are very excited for having Deanna on the show. And like I always say, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your enemies, tell the bird men, tell the dragons, tell the mole men, um, the lizard Lizard people, people, the voles, the goat men, the children, the children of the corn... The um, yes. the tall the tall whites the short grays the uh, the other lizard people that live under the center of the earth oh that are currently God. running our government. Um, <laughs> Hurry this up! Tell the pigeons because they're actually cameras for the FBI. I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but I've never seen a baby pigeon because they're fucking cameras. They work for the bourgeoisie, and I need to get ready for this wedding. So you best hurry up. You've got time. You've got I don't two think hours. You understand how long it takes me when I actually need to prepare 
Oh, okay then. Um, and once again, as I always say, thank you for listening, and good night, good morrow, and good morning to you fine folks. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Uh